Welcome to today's series of lectures on political science. The topic for the day is Contemporary Perspectives in Political Theory, Feminist and Postmodern. Today's host is Dr. Manisha Mirtha. We will be taking up part 2 of this topic today. Feminism is understood as a social and political movement which argues for equal rights and opportunities for women all over the world. It concentrates on the understanding of how unequal gender status came into being and how gender is constructed in society, particularly in the presence of patriarchy. This very movement when studied from a theoretical perspective is called feminist political theory. So, as we can understand from this slide, feminism or feminist political theory is broadly a social movement towards the advancement of women and it has two central beliefs. One that uh, the females of the society have been disadvantaged and secondly they can and should be brought to the same equal status as men. So, continuing from here we go on with the further introduction of the topic. It is a subset of the larger discourse of political theory. The term feminist political theory emerged in the late 20th century during the women's liberation movement of the West. So, this topic or this movement rather added the feminist side to political theory which had been missing till then. With this it expanded the boundaries of political theory and it started in the West mostly in the United States and United Kingdom. Feminist political theory saw women and their experiences as cardinal to political analysis of a given time and society. As a political movement, feminism stands against political, cultural, economic and social subjugation of women. Feminist political theory tries to end domination of men by criticizing and transforming theories and institutions which stand for women's inferior status. So, this uh, theory actually raised a very important and crucial uh, question why only men of the society are privileged and powerful? Why should women not be given the same status in the society? So, therefore, there was the, this theory was in constant engagement with bringing the females of the society at equal status. However, as it was seen the development of feminist political thought uh, has also been an uneven exercise with the additions and disagreements emerging in the form of different waves of feminist ideology. There are clearly three stages in feminism which are divided into first, second and third wave. So, as far as this feminist political theory is concerned, there have been various contradictions within the theory itself which can be understood as its three variants, the first wave, second and the third wave. Um, although the term feminism may also have been a 20th century invention. Uh, such views can also be traced back to earlier cultures like the ancient civilization of Greece. Say for example, way back in the uh, 14th century there was this book written book of the city of ladies by Christine D. Pisson which also showcased the issues of feminism. So, therefore, the idea of feminism had begun before uh, the 20th century, but yes it found more place with the emergence of the 20th century. Now, the first wave of feminism is referred to uh, as the first approach which brought about changes in the outlook of the political activists towards understanding feminism. Uh, this as we had already said started in the west and the formal initiation of the wave is attributed to Seneca Falls declaration drafted by Elizabeth Cady Stanton in 1848 in New York. The declaration highlighted new political strategies and ideologies for the feminist movement and it began with the idea of equal property rights and a dignified position uh, within the household itself. So, uh, with this 
a lot of other variants in the first wave itself came which we will be seeing in the further slides. Uh, however, by the beginning of the 20th century, the feminist activists shifted their attention towards political rights of women. So, the first wave of feminism was mostly concentrated on uh, securing the political and the legal rights of women, especially the right to vote. Consequently, in Britain, representation of the People's Act was passed and women did gain the right to vote. However, this right to vote which was granted to women was quite restricted and limited in the sense that only women above 30 years of age were allowed to vote plus they should have been owning some houses. So, therefore, this condition of property and age which was put uh, to this adult suffrage which was given to women at that particular point of time. However, the efforts of the feminists continued further and then the eligibility of women which was uh, 30 years was reduced to 21 years and the restriction on property was also removed. Uh, as far as United States is concerned, the wave followed a different political trajectory and the feminist leaders like Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, Lucy Stone and Lucretia Mott believed that before achieving the right to women, it was very important that there should be abolition of slavery. Gradually, the first wave in the US believed to have ended with the passage of the 19th amendment to the constitution which granted the right to vote to women in all the US states. Women were actually now seen as counterparts. In fact, also in the non-western world, uh, the first phase of the women's movement is understood almost analogous to the western times. The countries of the non-western world uh, were also aping the same ideologies which the western world feminism was proposing, be it on terms of economic aspects, educational or their own status uh, was concerned even as far as electoral rights were concerned. So, this wave was moving simultaneously both in the western and the non-western countries. So, for example, in India, women's movement uh, which can be traced back to the formation of uh, Indian Women's Association in Madras in 1917 and according to Dhanwanti Rama Rao, the arenas for women liberation identified by this body were the same as could be identified with the liberation which was happening in the western world. Say for example, equitable inheritance laws or right to divorce, widening of women franchisee etc. This first wave of feminism turned out to be a boon and a bane both for the uh, women's movement. As far as the positive side of this is concerned, it united the activists for a common goal. So, the, uh, the, the thought of feminism or the uproar on feminism was spread throughout the world. The method was the same, the structure was the same. However, certain activists became also complacent after achieving suffrage rights for women. So, the negative side of the first wave was that once this movement had secured the political and the legal rights of women, they thought that their job was done and they became complacent. It was only with the emergence of the second wave of feminism which was around 1960s that the movement got rejuvenated especially with the publication of Fredman's uh, book, The Feminist Mystique in 1963. Uh, in this book, um, uh, Fredman has pointed out that women were still feeling frustrated. They had gained the political right, but the kind of status was still not at par with the men of the society and they were confined mostly to the household work. So, the second wave feminism posited that the women question had still remained unresolved despite the political and the legal rights. And with the work of Germaine Greer and Kate Millett, which was earlier concerned with political rights of women, now it got more radicalized to include the other psychological and personal aspects of operation of women. It was during the second wave that the slogan which became a very famous slogan uh, which goes as the personal is political 
was coined by Carol Hanisch. And based on this, feminist activists saw political and cultural inequalities as closely interlinked. It was unlike that the conventional uh, feminists of the first wave who were only talking about the political and the legal rights, the second wave now entered into the personal aspects of feminism also. So, there they brought politics at the personal uh, level also. It was a period where personal lives of women were seen as reflection of deeply political power structures of patriarchal society. So, consequently of this second wave, this also this wave also saw protests against a certain beauty pageants like the Miss America beauty pageant in New Jersey in 1960s. And the idea behind this was that the second wave feminism assumed it to be objectification of beauty. They, they, they called it to be a kind of a cattle herd and they were com completely um, objecting the ideas of these beauty pageants. So, while the first wave of feminism was uh, identified mostly with the heterosexual white women belonging to the western middle class families, the second wave toiled to bring together the countries of the developing nations also, women of a color, women of an ideology and with this, this concept of solidarity and sisterhood started. It was believed that women's struggle is a class struggle, just like there were class struggle for the laborers or for any other kind of a uh, struggle which was there. This was also considered to be a struggle of a class in which women from uh, a social class in whose case race, gender and class come together to lead to their operation at the hands of the patriarchal class. Uh, the outcome of the second wave feminism was the manifestation of three sets of ideologies uh, namely liberal feminism, Marxist feminism which also includes socialist feminism and the third one being radical feminism. So, uh, what is this liberal feminism? The feminist scholarship developed their political theory with Mary Wollstonecraft's path breaking work, a vindication of rights of women. So, liberal feminism actually argues for equal access to education for women and men so that women could also become equally independent and morally as strong as the men of the society in the face of the patriarchal traditions and institutions. And this book of uh, Wollstonecraft actually paved the movement of um, liberal feminism. And then the discourse on this had uh, gained momentum by the 19th century. J. S. Mill was also contributing towards it. Uh, he argued for equal economic opportunities political rights, civil liberties for men and women both, emphasizing that state should now take an active role in the women's uh, liberation movement. The second uh, variant of the uh, second wave of feminism was Marxist feminism. Marxist feminism does not actually comply with the reformist tendencies of their liberal counterparts that we just now spoke of. Instead, they associate the exploitation of women with the economic, social and political structures related to capitalism. So, Marxism as we all know uh, is concentrated towards uh, capitalism as the major source of exploitation and creation of a class based society. So, then um, Marxism and the philosophers of this school of thought did not exactly and particularly examine women's operation. Rather, they were trying to look into the deeper insights to decode the structures which were implying and creating this kind of a exploitation. Um, and then adding to uh, the ideas of Marxist feminism, the subset of we could say Marxist feminism is this socialist feminism which uh, mostly talks about two things. One that yes, capitalism is the primary source of exploitation and the reason for operation. 
also the kind of patriarchal arrangement which is there in the society that was the secondary reason so there the socialist feminist um, they try to understand that women operation is not just a product of any one system of repression rather it is a common outcome of multiple forces of discrimination um uh, and then in order to achieve liberation of women the movement aimed at dealing with these issues collectively and these feminist organized themselves into women unions like the chicago women's liberation union to demand justified rights for a dignified living and the third kind of uh, variant of the second wave of feminism was radical feminism radical feminism which was mostly of uh, in the 60s and the 70s uh, and was was more towards um, raging materialism stressing the materialistic need of and the basis of patriarchy so um, say for example one of the uh, ideas that they were strongly uh, opposing was that the decision to marry should be a rational strategy rather than surrendering to a false sentiment so radical feminism actually um, viewed gender as a socially contrived absolute category where masculinity was construed in a complete opposition to the other that is the feminine then we come to the third wave of feminism uh, which started around 1980s and the major difference of this wave of feminism was that this wave actually completely subverted the ideas of the first two waves this theory actually embraces issues of gender and sexuality as course which includes questions of variation in gender transgender uh, sex positivity postmodernism post structuralism and likewise so therefore women from the third world countries also became a part of this and this broadened the horizons of feminism uh in this way many ideas of gender and heteronormativity were practiced by the activists of the previous two phases of feminism were uh, completely denied and inverted uh for example uh, the contemporary activists assumed the fashionable display of attire and likewise which was earlier shunned by the uh, previous two schools this wave of feminism believed that it was possible for women to be both um, fashionable and intelligent so they brought a new uh, face to the idea of feminism they saw ideals of feminine beauty as empowering with their chosen subjectivities and instead of seeing them as repressive objectification by men this was observed as a result of professional status and achievements of women made possible by the efforts of the second wave feminism and in this entire battle of third wave feminism internet also played a very important role because information was now not limited to boundaries uh internet helped women overcome the geographical boundaries in expressing solidarity with women in the developing world and women of color also so therefore uh, the political approach of the third wave was more inclusive multifaceted multicultural and global and the outcome of this were uh, the cultural feminism black feminism and postmodern feminism cultural feminism uh, again has some similarities and dissimilarities with radical feminism um, they agree that freedom of women begins in the rejection of the maleness of the society but they relegate material reality to the periphery of their experience so femininity was something to be celebrated of not to be hidden Uh, femininity was not an encumbrance it was not a burden it was something which had to be proud of so therefore this is a change which was brought by cultural feminism and feminists like robin morgan and rea dwokin and florence rush did make a distinction between femininity as identified by the patriarchal order uh, with virtues like submissiveness and passiveness visibly the natural characteristics of female nature which could be loving caring nurturing and egalitarian so this feminism argues for the preservation of gender distinctions 
then uh, the second aspect of this was black feminism now in us while on the one hand the women liberation and the black liberation movements were growing at a rapid pace black women did not still feel inclusive because when it came to the women uh, women liberation it was mostly restricted to the middle class white women and when it came to black liberation it was again only about men so the black women had kind of become the invisible category so then came this black feminism and this movement developed as a separate movement uh, to the response uh, of the problems which was created by the uh, by this this category of people uh, the movement called for stretching the individual capacity of women as well as care for the flourishing of humanity the movement also encouraged its women participants to stay connected with the community at large and the third aspect of the third wave of feminism was post modern feminism which actually made the largest departure from the earlier debates within feminism with their argument that language is what constructs gender so uh, what they mean over here is like say for example you know the experiences matter uh, post modern feminists assume that the modernist conception of feminism was only emphasizing between the differences which are there between men and women but there could be differences between the women themselves and the kind of experiences that they had of the exploitation that they were a part of so this was also added in the concept of post modern feminism and so therefore this post modern feminism actually critiqued the notion of sisterhood which had been created by the second wave of feminism they pointed out that there could be various other factors also um, in the lines of class uh, race and other such experiences which could lead to differences in feminist perspective post modern feminist perspective was in fact for everyone feminism was not just also for women it was anyone who experiences exploitation due to their gender due to their class category and the like so a uh, post modern feminism is trying to um, explain that women can empower themselves by acquiring knowledge about the uh, social and political factors that would actually shape their lives um and like you know for example women can learn about racism sexism and other forms of exploitation and this knowledge can be used to challenge the structures of exploitation post modern feminism has also been criticized a lot for uh, its lack of attention to structural issues however it has also been praised for its inclusiveness and the kind of multifaceted global picture that it brought to uh, feminism so uh, this was the second part of this topic so let us now try to sum up what we uh, understood today at the beginning of this lecture we tried to gain an understanding of the word feminism uh, which is actually a social and political movement and uh, which argues for the equal rights and opportunities for women all over the world this feminist political theory uh, is a subset of the entire discourse of political theory and added a new dimension to the uh, idea of political theory feminist political theory actually saw women and their experiences as very important and essential for the emancipation of society P uh, this feminist political theory has had various waves within its understanding there have been broadly speaking three waves of feminism the first wave of feminism focused on liberating women from the clutches of patriarchy so the first wave of feminism was something which strongly fought for the legal and the political rights of women the second wave of feminism extended the domain of feminine politics uh, against the the sexist ways of men to provide 
the private lives of women giving rise to various political ideologies. So, therefore, from the second wave of feminism emerged the ideologies of liberalism, radical feminism, Marxist feminism and likewise. And then there was this third wave of feminism that we spoke of which actually presented a dynamic critique to the feminist political trends uh, which had been there previously by the previous waves. And this wave actually acquired a more global multifaceted recognition by giving inclusive ideologies. And uh, as we have said before also though the concept of feminism or feminist political theory has been a 20th century creation work on this had been done uh, done in the earlier civilizations also. Uh, the first wave of feminism that we have spoken of which brought the political and le legal rights to women uh, they worked on the uh, women's suffrage but there were various restrictions to that the age limit was there the possession of uh, property was there. So, with the work of the first wave feminists the age was also reduced to 21 and the restriction of uh, property which was attached to it was also uh, reverted back. The second wave of feminism uh, posited women question that had remained unresolved. So, despite the legal and the political rights which had been gained by the first wave of feminism the second wave of feminism actually spoke of the slogan that personal is political. There were inequalities at the domestic level, at the household level, the status of women was still not uh, dignified. So, the second wave of feminism fought for that, but at the same time it was against certain uh, expressions of the society say for example, the beauty pageants which were there. So, the second wave of feminism was constantly against such objectification of beauty. Uh, it spoke of uh, liberal feminism, it spoke of Marxist feminism, it spoke of uh, socialist feminism and radical feminism also. Uh, then we spoke of the third wave of feminism. This third wave of feminism actually um, this brought about accepting differences in conflicts in gender. This wave of feminism embraces issues of gender as its core. It includes questions of variation in gender. So, therefore, they were fighting against exploitation and working towards empowerment also. Uh, for instance, the contemporary activists uh, believed that it was possible for women to be uh, beautiful and intelligent at the same time. They could uh, adorn the desirable attires at the same time have the requisite brains also. So, therefore, the ideals of feminine beauty as empowering with chosen subjectivities was included and the kind of repression or objectification which was made by the society at that point of time was constantly challenged. Uh, we also said that internet, internet brought a lot of um, changes in the thought of women and the movement at that point of time. It led to cultural feminism, black feminism, postmodern feminism. We talked about cultural feminism also which uh, derives and departs from its predecessor which is the radical feminism. Uh, it uh, derives from radical feminism in the sense that it agrees that freedom of women begins in the rejection of the um, maleness of the society. However, they also relegate material reality to the periphery of their experiences. Cultural feminists uh, identified by the patriarchal order with virtues like submissiveness and passiveness were now reverted with the ideologies of women being loving, caring, nurturing and creating an egalitarian society. So, and then we also spoke of black feminism, black feminism where uh, there were movements of women liberation going on and movements like black lives matter going on, but the black women were completely invisible. They were not included in any of these movements. So, therefore, black feminism actually spoke about the constant subjugation and exploitation that they were being uh, uh, that they had to face and 
black feminism was a movement called for stretching the individual capacity of women as well as cared for the flourishing of humanity. Black feminism was a movement which encouraged its women participants to stay connected with the community at large. It was a struggle to combat operation faced by women of a color. And then we spoke of postmodern feminism, which was one of the largest departure from the earlier debates of feminism. Uh, this basically focuses on the experiences of women, which can be very different from each other. It challenges the concept of solidarity and sisterhood, which was there. So therefore, uh, these have been the different aspects of feminism and they give a very diverse understanding of the concept of feminism. We hope this was informative for you and you benefited uh, by today's lecture. Thank you so much.